In this video, we will cover the basics of the break-even analysis. What the break-even analysis helps us to do is calculate the amount of output that a company needs to produce in order to reach a profit of zero. We are going to see this with an example. Suppose that Shelly owns this large farm that produces carrots all year round. To produce each carrot, her business needs several inputs, for example, water, seeds, and farm workers. These may be the variable costs of the business. The more carrots she wants to produce, the more water, seeds, and farm workers that she needs. Hence, these are costs that change with the amount of output. However, in addition to these costs, Shelley's company also had to build the uh, central office building where she hosts the employees that works in accounting and marketing. Those will be her fixed costs, because independently of the amount of carrots produced, those costs will not change. The existence of these fixed costs is what drives the break-even analysis. Suppose there were no fixed costs. In that case, the company will be making a profit on every carrot sold for as long as the price for which the carrots are sold was higher than the average variable cost. Suppose the company spends 10 cents of a euro on water per every carrot, 5 cents on seeds per carrot, and 20 cents per farm worker in carrot. If the company sells one carrot for one euro, it will be making a profit of 65 cents of an euro for the first carrot produced. If the company sells two carrots, it will be making a total profit of 1.3 euros for those two carrots and so on and so forth. However, our issue is that in addition to the variable costs, the company has to pay for the fixed costs. Suppose the office building costs 3,000 euros and the accounting and marketing workers 2,000 euros for a total fixed costs of 5,000 euros. Therefore, the profits of 65 cents on one single carrot are not sufficient to pay for those fixed costs. Now, how many carrots do we need to sell in order to cover those fixed costs? If we subtract the average variable cost from the price, we get the individual profit per unit of output. We refer to this individual profit as the contribution per unit. Why contribution? because this gives us the contribution per unit of output towards the payment of the fixed costs. And with this, we can then calculate the point at which our profits will be equal to zero. All we then have to do is divide our total fixed costs of 5,000 euros by this contribution per unit of 65 cents, which again is the profit per carrot sold. In this way, we calculate how many carrots we need to sell in order to cover all those fixed costs and after that start making a profit. In this case, we need to produce 7,692 carrots to start making a profit. This analysis can also be represented diagrammatically. The tips on how to draw the break-even analysis is given in another Rodrinomics video. Contribution per unit analysis is also useful on itself because we can calculate for different types of output in a company which ones are the most and least profitable. For instance, we could observe that carrots yield a contribution of 65 cents while aubergines have a contribution of 10 cents and broccoli a contribution of minus 20 cents. In this case, we can observe that purely in this mathematical analysis, the production of broccoli should be stopped. Now, some disclaimers on this analysis. The exercise is very good because it is simple, visual, and as accurate as it gets considering that we are doing mathematical calculations. However, this analysis also makes some very unrealistic assumptions. One, that all the output is sold at all times. Two, that variable costs are linear, which may not be true in the case of economies of scale. Three, that revenues are also linear but this may not be the case if we are selling in bulk, for example. Four, that fixed costs are constant, but we know that there are some fixed costs that eventually need to change, for example, the size of the central offices. Another negative of this model is that it is static. It is only useful for a given price and cost. Hence, it may not be useful for companies whose prices and costs change often. Finally, it relies on having accurate data at all times, which may not be realistic. This is it. I hope that you like this video. Please like and subscribe.